In this video, we're gonna be covering three main ways that nonprofits lose trust with donors. You wanna avoid these? Let's get into it. Hi, we are Ted and Lisa Snyder, and we are nonprofit consultants because we believe that a better world needs healthier nonprofits. Now, losing trust with donors is a thing that so many nonprofits deal with, and a lot of times you don't even realize that you have lost trust with them. Uh, losing trust can look like they're just not responding to you. The donations are decreasing. Someone who told you they were going to give decide not to give. Um, and so we know that donations are super important for nonprofits to be able to achieve what you're trying to do. And we want you to recognize the way that you are losing trust specifically so that you can work on those, so that you can gain more trust, which will make donations easier in the future. So tip number one. <laughs> To lose trust. <laughs> Not really a tip. This is it's something you want way. to avoid. <laughs> it's three ways. It's way number one. So, so the first way that nonprofits lose trust is low follow-up. Yeah. Low follow-up. So when when someone does donate or when someone does have a certain amount of interest, even if it's interest in something like volunteering or interest in um, attending an event or anything like that, anytime that you have bad follow-up on that, People fall through the cracks when they're wanting to volunteer when somebody gives and they don't get some kind of thank you in the mail or follow up on, hey, here's what's going on on our on our end as the nonprofit. When you have low follow up, that just tells people that you're not paying attention. Yeah, if you have a donor who has given you money and you don't follow up with them, either like a thank you right afterwards, a couple thank yous right afterwards are ideal. But then at some point over the next few months, letting them know how their resources were actually used or the impact that they've made. Or maybe you've had a donor who has told you, I really want to support your organization. And then a year later, you realize they never actually sent the check. Um, at the end of the day, they might have kind of expected you to stay in touch with them. Um, but as leaders, sometimes we find that nonprofit leaders opt to stand back and they say, oh, they said that they would donate. So I'm just going to let them donate in their time versus taking responsibility for it and saying, we talked a few weeks ago and you mentioned wanting a don wanting to send us a donation. Is there anything that I can do for you or any questions that you might have? Donors want to know that you are following up and aware. When they feel like they have been forgotten, they're wondering what else has been forgotten exactly. within your organization. Exactly. The second way that nonprofits lose trust with donors is that they don't know how to receive money. This is <laughs> huge. It's super common. We see this so, all the time. One of the crazy things that people don't realize is if you don't know how to receive a donation, you are actually decreasing the likelihood that that same person will donate again in the future. It's way easier to get a donor to donate a second time than, they, than to get someone who has never donated to donate a first time. Um, and so in terms of retention, it's very important that you not only know how to ask for money and be direct, but you also know how to receive the money graciously and say thank you. If you are uncomfortable receiving money, and by uncomfortable, I mean you grovel. You say, oh my gosh, we just don't even deserve this. I can't even say enough about how much difference this is going to make. And you gush. Or um, you kind of diminish it because you don't want to seem desperate for it. So you're like, oh, well, I mean, thanks. We'll find a way to use it. <laughs> Which I've seen people do with large checks because they don't know how to respond. Um, all of those things indicate to the donor that... Most people don't actually support your organization and that people with money choose not to donate to you. Um, and if they're just uncomfortable with the experience, people avoid discomfort. Yeah, I was going to say everything in your nonprofit needs to be a great experience, yes. including especially making a donation. When someone makes a donation, they should have good feelings about that. So when they think back on it, they might forget a lot of the details of like what they were wearing when they made the donation or where they were. But they will remember the feeling that they had when they handed in the check. And yeah. either it was a celebratory, I'm excited sort of feeling and a good positive feeling. Or it was like, that was kind of awkward and uncomfortable. I'm glad I did it, but it didn't like, I don't know, it didn't feel good. And that's a really, that's like a one-way ticket to them making no donations in the future or right. just avoiding it. Because people avoid awkwardness. Yeah. So the way to receive money is an honest and genuine Thank you so much. We appreciate your partnership. We are going to use your money well, and we are going to use it toward your vision, like the vision statement. Um, whatever amount of money, you should be sending them a thank you and possibly even a follow-up call. If it's a significant donation, ask the donor, like, 
We really appreciate this. I just, sometimes we like to spotlight people who have given or at least acknowledge people who have given. Is that something that you would prefer or is that something that you would rather remain anonymous with? It's okay to ask those questions. It's much better to ask their preference in terms of putting their name Mm -hmm. out there or putting their gift out there because some people just don't want any recognition at all. Other people appreciate like a plaque or a thank you or some sort of public or a social media thing, post or saying, social media hey, post. thank you. Especially, I mean, especially when you're talking about like small business owners and mm-hmm. stuff who are kind of expecting like, hey, I'm going to write this check. I'm, I, I would like to be like considered a sponsor of what's going on. Yep. It's really important that you establish what value they're expecting from their donation. Yeah. And then figure out how you can see that through. Because if the value that they're expecting is, nope, I just want to do this out of goodness in my heart and I don't want a lot of accolades or whatever for it, you need to deliver on that and not make a big deal out of their donation. There was a fundraiser that we ran a few years ago and one of the donors was like, I don't want to, I don't want you to make a big deal out of this, but I am going to give a lot of money. And it was kind of hard, but I had to be careful about that because as we were trying to raise the money, I wanted to be like, oh my gosh, this person just gave this much money because I knew that that might inspire somebody else who was a little bit more motivated by the accolades that they might be like, oh, if I give a lot, then I'll get recognized, right? But knowing that they their preference was, nope, I just want to do that. And I was like, okay, is it all right if we mention that an anonymous gifter did that? And they're like, oh, absolutely. Yep. So that was a a really good way for me to make sure that we were following through on the value that they were expecting from the experience. And that's what you need to know is one, how to just accept it for yourself, how to accept a check and not make it feel really uncomfortable. Um, But then also how to prefer the other person's um, value and the way that they would value a response. Because sometimes if you're someone who likes accolades, you might be like, let's go shout it. And the person is just dying inside. (laughs) Other times, maybe you're someone who would just give quietly and the other person really likes accolades or um, they want it to become something that they can use to let like their business know what their partners have supported. Mm -hmm. And so really figuring that out, easiest way to win is just simply by asking what they prefer. The third way that nonprofits lose trust with donors is that they don't have the metrics to back up their claims. Yeah. This is really important. If you currently don't have any metrics or numbers in regards to what your nonprofit is doing, please start tracking them. Um, It is a huge way to build trust before a donation is given, and it's super important for after a donation is given. If someone gives you a substantial donation expecting that you are going to fulfill on the vision that you have been telling them about. And then within six months, they're following what you're doing and they're realizing nothing is moving forward. Um, Things aren't being moved in the way that they were expecting them to. And it seems like you aren't accomplishing that dollar a month's worth of stuff within Mm -hmm. your vision. That's a huge way to lose trust where they start wondering if they made a mistake. And, you know, the other one, like low follow up, They might feel a little bit neglected. You don't know how to receive money. They might, you know, feel awkward. awkward. If they're wondering if they made a mistake trusting you, that's terrible. You never want a donor to look back and say, I think I regret my decision to give that organization money. And so understanding your metrics, understanding your numbers, not just your stories, but the numbers that go along with the stories is super important and communicating them before and after the donation is highly important. Yeah. It's important to remember that like when you share a story, those are really, really valuable, Mm -hmm. but a story is just anecdotal evidence. You want to provide empirical evidence that shows not just here are the flat numbers of what we were able to accomplish and how much money it took to do it, but also show the trend line, you know, show last year's numbers, show two years ago's numbers Because when people see a positive tick mark up and you can show like, hey, we were able to get more benefit for the dollar this year than last year. We were able to accomplish more things this year. We were able to give more meals this year or whatever it is. When they see that trend line, this shows them this is a winning team and people want to be a part of a winning team. Yeah. And sometimes your trend lines, they may or may not go up. It depends on what your vision is. They may just remain stable. 
our goal is to support this many families, but even to show that longevity mm -hmm. and the stability and the fact that your organization isn't all over the place and going with whatever feels good in the moment. Um, whatever those metrics are that support the vision that you are selling or that you are putting out there, make sure that you're tracking those so that you can communicate them so that the people who are around you know that they can trust you and your organization. Now, if you're like, hey, I feel like I've established a lot of good trust with my donors already, but I don't really feel super confident in how to be asking for donations. We actually have a video that can help you learn a few fun ways to do fundraising. You can check that video out. It's uh, on the screen somewhere. You can click on that and we'll see you guys soon.